All right, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to my mouthpiece collection. You can see it's a bit smaller than the one that I had from last year. All right, so for this list, I'm only going to choose the mouthpieces that I actually still have. Also, this isn't my pick for the best mouthpieces on the planet. Obviously, I haven't played every single mouthpiece ever made, but just in my collection, these are the ones that I've pretty much going to eliminate down to my top five favorite. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so... Let's get to it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so starting in this top left right here, this is one of these inexpensive mouthpieces from China. This is a Yi Bai that comes plated. I think I paid around $32 or something for it. It is the only mouthpiece out of all of these that I've ever had that I actually didn't do a review on. And the reason why is quite simple. is because it's terrible. <laughs> I shouldn't say it's terrible. It actually, it plays very well. It is just the worst sounding mouthpiece out of all of them. And the only real difference between this mouthpiece and the other ones is the plating. So whatever it is that they plated that thing with just makes it sound terrible. And I've pretty much hated the recordings that I've done with it. So I still have it. I haven't quite figured out what I'm going to do with it yet, but I'll get to that later. Okay, coming up here, ladies and gentlemen. This is one of those $10 acrylic mouthpieces that you can get on Amazon from China. I like this thing so much I decided to just get this lava lamp type of thing. I call this my lava lamp SVS Sorala Sax here. This thing is technically the worst mouthpiece that I have. But man, straight out of the bag, because it didn't come in a box, this thing just played remarkably better than what I thought. So all I did really was just sand this table. And now... It plays very interestingly. I really like how unique the sound is. It's a lot of fun. Probably the most fun mouthpiece that I have out of all of these to play on. Okay, moving up to the Selmer Golden Tone. I think this competes with the Yamaha mouthpieces, the uh, Yamaha C-Class mouthpieces, but uh, I do think that the Yamaha mouthpieces are better. Again, I have reviews on all of these. Here is my iBay mouthpiece it, again it's that same kind of cheap yi bai mouthpiece type of thing this one just has a smaller tip this mouthpiece is actually pretty amazing i like playing this with my stiffer cut reeds you guys can check out my video on that still the standard in the classical saxophone selmer the soloist or the uh, c star mouthpieces definitely the go-to in terms of classical saxophone sound. It's a bit more resistant than what I want it to be in order for me to really feel comfortable playing classical music a lot. Up here on the neck, ladies and gentlemen, this is the $20 unplated mouthpiece that I actually had plated. It's still on the neck because I'm still going through some recordings with this. I use this BG ligature with that. Over here, ladies and gentlemen, we have the Lakey mouthpiece. I have this compass ligature because you often see those advertised together. This thing punches way above its weight, but this plastic has always felt a little cheap to me. A lot of fun with that thing. Here I have my Auto Links, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, you can see how old this thing looks. This is not a vintage mouthpiece, ladies and gentlemen. My plans for this is to basically take it from an 8-star down to a 7-star and then to have this thing stripped down and then platinum plated. I really want to see what a platinum plated auto link mouthpiece is going to be like. And then I'll just kind of do some work on it myself and see where I can get it. It's just my regular super tone master. This is the one that I'm using mostly for all these videos. So that way, you know, nobody thinks I'm using some kind of trick specialty mouthpiece in order to do the stuff that I do. This is the one that I'm using mostly. I have the modern vintage auto link, still a very fantastic mouthpiece. But because of this small bore, I'm going to leave it instead of altering it. And this might be part of a type of promotional giveaway or discount sales that I'll do at some point in the future. And over here, rounding out the end of the auto links, ladies and gentlemen, I got my modern vintage slant signature auto link here. Very nice mouthpiece. But I do feel like auto link is pretty much fallen asleep in terms of hard rubber because so many other companies have pretty much just surpassed them in my opinion but still a very nice mouthpiece despite Autolink's notorious uh, quality issues 
Okay, over here, I got this Rico mouthpiece. This is probably the second most recommended mouthpiece that I suggest for people to get that don't really know what they want. I still have the M7 and the M9, but uh, this one is the one that I use the most of those Rico mouthpieces. Very inexpensive and very effective. Also from Rico, ladies and gentlemen, if you want a different flavor, but at an equally affordable price, I have the Rico Graftonite C7. Of all the mouthpieces that I have, this one comes in the most varieties. I think there's like nine different versions of essentially the same mouthpiece. Right here, I have my Yamaha 5C. Absolutely, positively the number one mouthpiece that I recommend for beginners and even people that are switching and don't really know what they want, but they need something. Over here, I have the only mouthpiece that I reviewed that didn't actually play out of the box. I did do some work on this mouthpiece. It plays beautifully. It's got a nice dark thing going. Jody Espina just acquired Eugene Russo mouthpieces, and I am very, very curious to see how similar those mouthpieces are to what it is that I wound up with after I fixed this mouthpiece. Okay, still a beautiful, wonderful mouthpiece. Ladies and gentlemen, here I got this Woodstone Ishimori. This mouthpiece is pretty much in the vault. The tip opening is just a little bit too open. I think I should go with a six or a six star. So I don't even really play this mouthpiece that much. But what a nice work of art and a very nice playing mouthpiece. Okay, over here, I got my two Duke Offs. I don't play on either one of these anymore because they are just in horrible condition. <laughs> these are from the 80s and the 90s. I got these used. There's a dent or a chip out of that thing and almost all the ones that you see from this era from Duke Off are pretty much all bent in some way if you check them out on eBay. Here I have my metal brill heart, ladies and gentlemen. This thing is an absolute workhorse. At some point I'll probably do some work on this mouthpiece, but I had to unofficially retire it because whenever I moved to a new mouthpiece when I had this I would just wind up playing the new one like this one and it's different enough to where I just needed to change and stop playing this one probably never get rid of this thing though over here I have my cannonball 5j mouthpiece you can see I need to clean this thing up a bit but this thing absolute workhorse more like a mule actually but when in the jam I pull that thing out and I am good to go. <laughs> Giggity. I do want to try one of the really expensive Yanagasawa saxophones with a Yanagasawa mouthpiece to see how much they've been calibrated to work well with each other. I'm really pushing it to the limit. I don't really play this mouthpiece that much. Uh, this mouthpiece is a real sweetheart, and I think that they have either brought this back or they're bringing this back, ladies and gentlemen. From Didario. I have the uh, one of these original marble mouthpieces. This thing is an absolute sweetheart of a mouthpiece, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. From the Gary Sugal book, ladies and gentlemen, I got this uh, new TAM, the gold-plated one. I still have the silver-plated one. I'm probably going to use that one as a promotional mouthpiece. And I actually still have the one that had some defects. You guys were asking me about that. Nice mouthpiece that one is. I have this Cannonball 7. This one came with some of the earlier Cannonballs. I never play this mouthpiece. I keep it though. Maybe at some point I'll just experiment fooling around with the baffle just to see what I can get. It's nice to keep these mouthpieces that are well made that you don't really use. Like I talked about with that Autolink and getting it platinum plated just to see what you can come up with. Maybe you'll wind up finding some new life and some products that you don't use and save yourself some money and then learn a lot about how these things really work and what attributes of the mouthpiece really matter the most to you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, a complete sweetheart surprise from Giardinelli. This mouthpiece cost $20 and just completely, completely blew my mind. Wow. Uh, I think they definitely modeled this mouthpiece off of some vintage jazz mouthpiece down here. From Pi TT, I got the TXX-7 Altissimo Freak of a Mouthpiece for 65 bucks. Very interesting indeed. Comes with this slotted ligature design there. 
Sorry about the background noise. I can't take that out. Okay, from the Van Doren book, ladies and gentlemen, let's start with the T35. Definitely the darkest mouthpiece that I have with a bunch. It borders on actually being a classical mouthpiece. And it wouldn't surprise me at all if somebody was actually using this to play classical saxophone. That one is definitely going to be on the chopping block because I just, I don't really use it. Um, so if I get my book and the website going, that's going to be part of the promotional discounts and giveaways and whatnot. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the V16, whenever anyone asks me about this mouthpiece, I just say, go ahead and get it. It is to me a better version of your typical type of hard rubber auto link. They're made better. It's a really, really nice mouthpiece. Okay. Blastomatic right here. I had the T55, but that was a little too open for me. T45 is actually a little too close. I would like to get a T50, but, you know, I'd be better off getting a T55 and then just sanding it down. But this is still my go to Blastomatic mouthpiece. This is my Van Doren T45. Jumbo Java. Got the little elephant on the side there. And then rounding out this whole thing, ladies and gentlemen, we got the T6 small chamber and the T5 large chamber from Van Dorn metal mouthpieces ladies and gentlemen uh, the T6 for the longest time has been my main mouthpiece and I got this T5 with a large chamber just to see what's what and I use this mouthpiece a lot for recordings because it has a unique kind of vintagey type of sound okay thin in the herd ladies and gentlemen and let's start with the Ishimori uh, this one didn't make the list it's still fantastic in every way, but I don't play it because the tip opening is just too open for me. I don't really play this one that much because I have other stuff that pretty much does what this one does. The Cannonball, I found a way to pretty much replace and fulfill what this one was doing. It's something that I feel is more efficient. The Yamaha 5C, although highly recommended for beginners in terms of pro playing and whatnot, I just have better choices. Also eliminating Selmer. I don't really play that much classical. And to be honest, if I'm going to, I've actually written some classical stuff. You guys have heard it with some of my intros, but even though this is the standard uh, classical saxophone sound, I'm going to go in a different direction with that. Okay. Although I love this mouthpiece and it is a world of fun to play and to experiment on. It's not quite what I would use regularly on any gig but i still record with this mouthpiece okay believe it or not kicked out of the group is my van doren t6 small chamber i just found other mouthpieces that can do what this one does but it doesn't have the sacrifice that i have to make even when i first reviewed this mouthpiece i talked about there being a type of uh, unusual subtone with it and i've grown to really miss what that subtone can offer me. So this is still definitely one of my go-to mouthpieces, but in terms of it being my top five favorite, this one didn't make the cut. Before I talk about these five here, I want to talk about some honorable mentions that aren't on this list. Like before I said, uh, if I don't have it, I didn't really put it on this list. So let's talk about the Berg Larson. Basically, I got rid of it because the tip opening that I had was too small, but it would definitely definitely be one of my absolute go-to mouthpieces if i had it i'll probably get another one it's going to be a 110 instead of a 100 from theo wani i've had a lot of mouthpieces i had the hard rubber data i had the metal data the shiva 2 metal and i had the mantra and i wound up getting rid of all of those mostly because the tip openings were either too large or too small basically so at some point I do want to find like a seven or a seven star metal data. Uh, the person that I sold the hard rubber data to is loving that thing. I also had the Jody Jazz Super Jet. Hopefully I won't forget what mouthpieces I've had and which ones I didn't. Yeah, I think that pretty much rounds it out. I also had that silver Yee Buy mouthpiece. I still have that one, but uh, I'm in the process of treating that, trying to get some of that stuff off of it. But all right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get down to these five here now this Giardinelli mouthpiece for 20 bucks man wow i don't know what they modeled that thing after i'm almost 100 percent certain it's some kind of vintage maybe a vintage auto link that they've modeled it after but 
this thing is just absolutely amazing. It's very easy for me to play over four octaves with that thing, and it just completely blew my mind. <laughs> From Gary Sugal, I have this new TAM, the Kirk Whalum one, and this one is definitely the closest to my smooth jazz voice of any mouthpiece that I've tried. It's also the most expensive one on this list um, that I have at least left anyway. <laughs> This auto link, man, you just auto link has some issues, but I still just absolutely love auto links. This is a regular one. They have a Florida one that's out now. I definitely want to look into getting that one. But first, I'm going to do what I said, getting that one uh, stripped, lowered, and then hopefully platinum plated, finding somebody that can do that. <laughs> Right here, I got this $20 Yi Bai number nine mouthpiece that I got from China. I've done some work on this thing. I actually had the unplated one plated with gold. I still have the silver one, but with all the stuff going on, it's just taking a longer time for that stuff to come back in the mail. <laughs> I got my Blastomatic go-to mouthpiece, the Jumbo Java. That's the one I play for hard-hitting kind of stuff. And, man, you just... <laughs> I love Van Doren products because they, they make very good products. <laughs> It's really hard for me to pick one out of all of these, but if I did have to pick one that I would choose to do everything with, that would be my number one main mouthpiece out of all of these. I got to go with this one right here. And the reason why is pretty much kind of obvious. Sorry about the spit marks on there like that, but this is just quite simply the mouthpiece that I've put the most work into. I've done the most work to it to get it to play the way I want it. It's still, I almost dropped it. <laughs> It's still not without its problems. I think that overall this mouthpiece is just a little bit too small. I am going to experiment with some different reeds. I have some Boston Sack Shop reeds. Everybody's talking about those. Let's see what those are about. I also have some uh, Rigotti reeds that are coming on the way. So I'm really going to put this thing through the test. And also when I get this silver plated one, put that thing through the test. So right now, this is my favorite mouthpiece that I have out of all of them. And basically, I got it for less than $200. So if you are looking to get something like this, I'm going to tell you right now, these mouthpieces are horrifyingly inconsistent. Wow. But, you know, with a little bit of work, you can get yourself a really inexpensive mouthpiece that you can work on yourself and get it to play the way you want. I mean, that's how you do with pretty much everything that you like. And when it comes to saxophone playing, that should be absolutely positively no different. Well, how does it feel to be the winner this year? <coughs> That's fantastic. Well, look forward to seeing you next year. How about that? <coughs> 
Well, Van Dorn T6, are you going to put up a good fight this year? <laughs> Alrighty then. Well, sorry about your loss, but hang in there. You're still one of the top contenders.